I don't believe in accidents. I believe in divine appointment. I was born into a devout Muslim home, and God had plans, wonderful plans. I've been there. On the day I was going to kill myself, Jesus revealed himself to me, and he gave me a new life. And if you pray with me, and if you believe with me, God is going to give you a new life today. Jesus Christ is real. He changes life, he changes destiny, and he changes nations. And those nations can change the world. Dear friends, hi. Welcome to Embracing New Life program. I am Ushik Abla and like as usual I will be sharing with you the beautiful wonderful things about my God Lord Jesus Christ who is the same yesterday today and forever today I want to talk to you about blood today I want to talk to you about power of blood and also power of blood of Jesus Christ when I said I want to talk to you about blood because in many many religions blood sacrifice is very important if you go to islam you will see blood sacrifice animal sacrifice if you go to look into uh, judaism you will see blood sacrifice in the old testament in, in if you go to look at voodoo in many many like voodoo many other religions you see a blood sacrifice why blood sacrifice is important in islam i remember when i was a little muslim girl my great grandmother took a beautiful lamb and she called me come with me i want to show you something you are big enough you are old enough to see this and i didn't know what was going to happen and she took me to the basement of our house and i was looking at her she was just cleaning up her knife it was a big knife in her hand and i started getting the idea and i started shaking seeing that beautiful lamb and she closed a lamb's eyes with her scarf and then start praying and she cut she slaughtered the lamb from its neck and i was crying and weeping before i knew it i fainted and for after a while i came back to normal that day was specifically very special also very scary and very shattering for me as a child i believe at that time i was eight or nine years old i knew the meaning i knew the uh, time of the year of the blood sacrifice but obviously seeing it happening in front of my very eyes was pretty dramatic experience for me months after months that scene replayed in my mind at night and i i had a hard time sleeping and i started seeing nightmares that really strongly affected me in islam kurban we call it kurban kurban means getting closer to allah getting it is arabic word and in arabic meaning getting closer to allah then we see it in other religions later on in the years i have seen cows are running without heads when they just cut their their necks and slaughter them during the time of kurban this time of the year was always very sad time for me as an animal lover but more than that over the years i wondered why people sacrifice animals for their religions then we look into bible we look at the word of god in the old testament we see that there is power in the blood even in the old testament first time we are seeing that god is speaking to a brother who killed his brother abel and saying your brother's innocent blood is crying out to me so here i want to say blood speaks blood has power 
before even I talk to you about the blood of Jesus Christ, I want you to understand in the word of God, we are receiving the information, the knowledge about the power of the blood. In book of Leviticus 17, 11, we see 11 and 14, for the life of the flesh is in the blood and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that make it an atonement for the soul. For it is the life of all flesh, the blood of all it is for the life thereof. Because blood represents life. Blood represents life. And God is teaching us in the scriptures that, and especially when he's saying, do not eat meat in the Old Testament. Do not eat meat with blood in it. Why? Because it has life. It has life in it. And today, even today in the world, you see all kinds of movies that which I do not watch and I refuse to watch because of my faith that you see everywhere blood. Why? Because it has certain power. However, then I want to speak to you about the blood of Jesus. God brought His Son, He sent His only, only begotten Son to this world for you and for me, for the sins of all the world. Imagine, all the mankind's sins, every single sin that you can list and you can think of, Jesus Christ is a perfect sacrifice, came, went to the cross, and shed his blood as a perfect lamb. This is why as Christians, we don't need anymore to sacrifice animals for our sins. We don't need anymore to trust in the blood of a poor animal. His blood is running on the street. I remember when I was a little girl, I used to see streets very bloody, especially in the little towns of Turkey. I used to go and see everywhere was blood. I remember my father was maybe opening a business or going to an orphanage and giving a lamb. And when they were slaughtering the lamb, right after they would dip their finger into that lamb's blood and they would put it on my forehead. I used to ask my father, why? Why do you do that? And my father used to say, for protection. May this lamb's blood protect you. But I have better news for you today. As we sing, and sometimes we do not talk enough about the blood of the lamb, blood of the perfect lamb. We don't preach enough and we don't rejoice enough for the blood of the Lamb, and we don't even sing enough. Oh, the blood of Jesus. I'm so thankful for the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. Hallelujah. It washes white as snow. That blood has a protecting power. Not the blood of any lamb, but the perfect lamb of God. And we see again in the Old Testament, that angel is passing through all Egypt. And what happens if you had the blood of the animal on your doorpost? That angel doesn't touch to your house. In the same way, if you are in Christ Jesus, if you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are under that blood. Instead of putting, dipping a finger and putting on my forehead, now I am under the blood of Jesus. That blood protects. That blood cleans. That blood cleans. That blood saves. That blood changes. That blood has the power. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. In Hebrews 9.22 says, Without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sins. So we need, we need that remission. We need that 
price to be paid for our sins. And Jesus paid that price when he went to the cross and shed his blood for us. In the Old Testament, when people were sacrificing, when Israelites had to sacrifice lamb or any, any required animal, it had to be perfect. It had to be without any spot or disability or defect on it. And when we look at the New Testament, we see Jesus Christ as a perfect, perfect lamb shedding his blood. What? How can it get better than a perfect man going to cross for you and for me and telling you no more cows, no more lambs, no more uh, camels, no more shedding any other blood. I am going to that cross to be a perfect sacrifice for you to be cleansed, for you to be protected, for you to be healed, for you to be cleansed, and for you to be saved. My friends, I don't know where you are today, and I don't know if you ever sacrifice any animal for your religion. Today, I am inviting you, look at Jesus Christ and His blood in a special way. Even when I take any Bible translation, and I first look, first look at the scriptures with the blood. I want to see in that translation if the blood of Jesus, blood of Christ has the reserved, deserved place in that Bible. But we, even as Christians, we are yet to understand and use with our words into the existence the power of blood. Every morning when I send my kids to school, my family outside, every single morning I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, over my life. I tell to my daughter, I cover you. I plead the blood of Jesus over you from head to the toe. When we go through warfare, we go to the things, spiritual battles, I plead the blood of Jesus. When I have a situation, when I have a circumstance, that trial or a wrestling, if I am wrestling with something, I start pleading the blood, blood of Jesus into this situation. And today, today, I am asking you to ask God to reveal himself to you. Reveal the word blood, blood of Jesus Christ to you in a very, very special way, my dear friends. And even when we take communion, we drink the blood as a symbol of Jesus Christ's blood shed on the cross. Whenever I take that communion, I take it very seriously because that symbolic, symbolic, faithful act also has a power of healing and also has a power to make me or anyone sick if it is taken without any reverence, without any repentance, without any examination of the heart. That blood has power, not the blood of a lamb. Another childhood mem memory I remember my father he brought a lamb, he was opening a big a building, he was in the construction business and he was going to open a big, big building and for the opening also, in a, in a Muslim country they sacrifice animals. And he brought this lamb and he was such a beautiful lamb and I became friends with that lamb. I used to run in our backyard and he used to run after me but he didn't know any tricks or anything else. We used to just run and run. And I used to put salt in my hand. Lambs love salt and he would come and just lick my hand. I was craving for a dog so badly and it was not happening at that time. And they allowed me to play with that lamb. I even named that lamb Abdullah. And I used to go and play and share all my sadness, all my problems that I could not share with anyone, with Abdullah. He was my 
wonderful friend. When the time came, my father was going to sacrifice Abdullah. I was just crying and crying and crying. I begged my father to not to sacrifice Abdullah. He was my only friend. He was my only person in confidentiality, keeping all my secrets, all my heartaches and dreams. Then my father took the lamb and I was all day crying. At night, he came back home. He came back home with Abdullah. My father said, I could not do it. Every time I was going to slaughter him, I was taking of you and how much you were hurting. I think it was one of the biggest gifts my father gave me. He gave me back Abdullah. But soon after, Abdullah was stupid and foolish enough. He fell down from the third story of that construction and died. And other wild dogs came and devoured him. Here, I just want to tell you this. After so many years of that day, God gave me his perfect, perfect gift. God the Father gave me the perfect gift and perfect sacrifice. Today I don't have to put my trust or confidence, even my secrets and my deep dreams and thoughts into an animal or anyone else. Through shedding his blood on the cross and telling me that I love you, Ushuk, unconditionally. I love you the way you are. Just come to me just as you are. I will be your friend. I will be your savior. I will be your confidence and comfort. And I will be your protector. After so many years from that day, today I am standing here in front of you, knowing that I have Jesus Christ in my life and I don't need any more to sacrifice anything because it is not by works it is not by our sacrifices it is only by faith in Jesus Christ you and I can get saved faith without works is nothing but first the faith first the love of Christ reigning in us start changing us from inside out. That blood has that kind of power, my friends. 1 John 1, 7 says, The blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sins. I don't know what can you find to clean my sins. I committed probably all the sins in Ten Commandments. I violated every single one of them. Using His name in vain, yes. Having other idols before Him, yes, I have committed that too. Not honoring my father and my mother, yes. Murder, yes. I aborted, I killed two of my babies before Christ. I committed theft, of course, and murder in a different way, gossip, slander, damaging someone's reputation, lying, all of them I had. But when I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, and let me tell you, when you have all those sins, they are heavy. They are so heavy, I know. I could not lift up my head. They were on my shoulders. I had that weight, like tons of weight I was carrying on my shoulders. But on the day I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, I told Him, Lord, come and live inside of me, Jesus. That moment when I said simply, yes, to the kingdom of heaven, yes to Christ, yes to everything that he offered to me for free of charge. When I said yes, just at that moment, all those weight from my shoulders were lifted up. This is freedom. This is freedom that only 
blood of Jesus Christ can provide for you. The moment I said yes to Christ, I felt it. Sometimes we think that that experience, salvation experience is not tangible. We cannot hold it. We may think, you may think, we cannot see it. No, my friend, salvation is a tangible experience. His grace is tangible. His love is tangible. At the moment I was giving my life to Christ, it was tangible that that weight of sin was washed away. I was washed away. I was cleansed and sanctified through His blood. And that blood still speaks. Imagine Abel's blood was speaking. Imagine how much more blood of Jesus Christ is speaking today and His power today. Hallelujah. Today I am going to invite you to be able to wash under the blood of Jesus, to, to be able to say, I don't need any more sacrifices. I don't need any more animal sacrifices to make. I am under the blood of the Lamb. I am inviting you, if you are a believer, starting to pleading the blood over your children, over your situation, in the workplace. Maybe you are working with people that they don't believe. Jesus Christ, they are not sharing your faith and you see turmoil. You see no peace in that place. I suggest every day you go there, before you go there, you say, I plead the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus into this place. I plead the blood, blood and Shalom, Jehovah Shalom, come, your peace, walk with, with me talk with me. Lord, let me carry your peace everywhere, everywhere I go. How wonderful is that? And how can we say that it is not tangible? You see the change. For a short while ago, my daughter brought a friend from school, a girl, young girl, teenage girl. And as soon as I saw the girl, my eyes, my eyebrows was up because this girl was, I thought, probably she is Satanist. She was dressed in black, she had black nail polishes, you know what I am talking about. She had black lipstick and all her eyes were just uh, with the makeup, black, 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 everything. And she had a big chain on her neck with a sign that it didn't, I didn't know at that time. And when I saw her as a mother, uh, that friend, or she called her a friend, Next to my daughter, I was suddenly freaked out. I was afraid for my daughter. And my daughter came up to me when her friend was taking off her jacket at the door. She said, please, please talk to her. She needs Jesus. This is why I brought her here. So there was such relief in my heart, but at the same time, God's grief, God's heart was grieving. And that burden started raining, filling my heart. I started grieving for that girl, precious soul. And she came, she talked like any young child would talk. I asked her, would you like to drink something? She said, yes, I would like to have orange juice if you have. I said, of course, and I gave it to her. And I started, it's a decision, you know, at that moment, just because she's being different, I can make a decision to hate her, dislike her, or reject her or I can make a decision as a Christian to love her, embrace her, and pray for her. Not embracing what she believes. Not being friends with what she believes. Because friendship with the world, Bible says, is being enemy towards God. You have to choose either one. It's black and white. You cannot be in the both. If today you are a believer, one of your feet is in the world, the other one is in the church, I am going to ask you to consider to put both of them in the house of God, both of them walking with the Lord. So I welcome this young child and 
she started talking to me. Her parents were getting divorced and they already had boyfriends and girlfriends. And I asked her, what time do you have to go home? We can take you. She said, my parents don't care where I am. Nobody cares, she said with an attitude. I said, well, if you like, you can sleep over tonight and we take you to the youth group. We are going to take our daughter to church youth group. She said, well, I am a witch. I am not a believer, I am not a Christian. Don't you think, looking at me, they don't judge me, they accept me? I said, church doors are open to all, all. I wanted to say all sinners, but something stopped me there. And I didn't want to close my witness. And I said, church door is open to all. And we took that girl that night to church with my daughter. And I watched them from a little distance. Later on, my daughter said, at the altar call, she threw herself to the altar and wept and wept and wept. She came home that night, her makeup completely ruined, her beautiful eyes had hope, and change didn't come right away. But she was under the blood of Jesus. At that night, even when she was sleeping in another room, as a mother, I didn't sleep all night because I, I had still concern for her being under my roof. And this is a wise concern. And I got up in the middle of the night, over and over, I pleaded the blood of Jesus over my daughter, over her room, over the doorpost. I said, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus, change this precious soul. Touch her with your Holy Spirit. And this girl today is a changed person. Why? Because Christ loved that witch, little witch girl. Even in her wickedness, God cared her and called her and dragged her path into my house and made a huge change into her heart and life. Today, it is available for you, my friend. Today, you can live in victory. You can be cleansed and protected and sanctified and change because of the perfect blood of the Lamb. If you just believe, if you just surrender, if you just say, Jesus Christ is the Lord, He will come and change your life, change your destiny forever. God bless you. Until next time.